Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Keep Forest Breakout Pro. Uh, now, this is a trailer music sound effects library. It has all of those sounds that are most commonly found in trailer music. Um, it has the big hits, it has the Brahms, it has the um, uh, benders type of Brahm, signature sounds, downers, uh, percussion, pulses, risers, um, all of those sounds that really make a track sound like a trailer track and, uh, and give the trailer editors lots of edit points to cut their footage to um so this sort of um these sort of sounds this sort of library they could be used as layers on top of other kind of type of music so you could have a hybrid orchestral where you had a orchestral music playing and then these sounds would be layered over the top uh, to give it that trailer feel or any other type of music rock pop edm uh, if as, with these sounds and the three act structure that i talked about in my jaeger video um, that's what makes a trailer track a trailer track, you know, and the rising intensity, of course, as well. Um, so, yeah, you could layer these over any type of music to give it that trailer feel. Or you could create what is known in the industry as a sound design track, which is a, a track that just uses these sounds and nothing else, uh, mostly used in TV spots. Uh, and if the, if you were creating a track like this, then this library uh, could be considered like an all-in-one trailer music library because you could create a sound design trailer track just using this library um uh, so this is the third in the series uh keep forest have created devastator and devastator war zone the first one was kind of like a um a uh, uh like really heavy distorted industrial punk i think they called it uh the second one war zone was more like a trailerized trap music um and i'll cover both of those in separate videos um and this one very bass heavy, um, very kind of focusing a lot on kind of like the Brahms and bass sounds and signature sounds and stuff like that. And a lot of glitchy sounds in here as well. And it's been done in conjunction with a producer and composer called Joe Ford. Uh, if you don't know Joe Ford, he's a, um, a glitch hop and um, dubstep and neurofunk producer. And these guys, if you know anything about those genres of music, these guys are really uh, into their sound design. They're sound design pros you know and other other producers in in those kind of fields um drum and bass and dubstep and stuff they, they kind of look up to the newer funk guys for their for their production tips and sound design tips so it, it, joe ford knows what he's doing when it comes to um sound design and a lot of these trailer um sorry these um newer funk um composers or producers are kind of migrating over to the trading music world so um the rest of us really have to up our game because they do set the bar pretty high um but joe ford He's um he's created this um sample library um in conjunction with Keep Forest, so he's giving us a little taste of his his, his sound design with this, and it it doesn't disappoint. It's a it's, it's a great library, and along with it, he has um done a whole series of YouTube videos. If you go over to the Keep Forest um uh, YouTube channel, and I urge you to do so, um there's a whole bunch of uh, little mini tutorials that he's done, and. Uh, uh, some of them uh, they're all sound design based it's like it's about using the the, the library as a starting point to, to then create your own um uh, sounds unique sounds from it um so a lot he does a lot of stuff like a, a lot of extra processing on top of the samples that are already in the in in the library uh, and one of the um one of the kind of videos or a, a little mini series within his mini series of videos is, is about creating those Mick Gordon doom style sounds. And with that in mind, that has been the inspiration uh, for for this track that I've written here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little listen to this track. It is a, a, a I'd call it a trailerized rock doom style track. And uh uh followings from the tutorials that he's done on on their youtube channel so we'll take a little listen to this track and then we'll take a little look at the library the interface we'll take a little look at how i incorporated it into my template my my universal template that i've created and then we'll dissect the track a little bit and um uh, see how I've used the library uh, to put this together. Now, I, I should say from the start that I have uh, added a couple of extra little libraries in the form of this um, uh, Cable 8 um, eight string guitar uh, library, just because I wanted to give it that extra um, doom feel. So I wanted to add a bit of a distorted guitar. Um, these are their 
Elements um, series. Uh, they're fairly cheap. They're like forty dollars each. I've used the crunch guitar and the high gain guitar. So basically, they they've created the guitar tone for me. They've got a bigger library, which is a clean one, where you then add your own effects to create your guitar tone. But I'm not a guitarist, um, and I haven't put the time and effort in to learn that sort of sound design because uh, it takes a bit of time. Uh, so I've just gone for their pre-made crunch and high gain. So it's, I mean, I've added a few of my own effects after, well, quite a few of my own effects afterwards. But um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm using this guitar on top of the Break Break um, Breakout Pro library. And I think what I'm going to do here as well, um, I'll, I'll cover it a little bit um, more later on. But I have set um, my entire uh, template up so that it can very easily create stems and uh audio um the the alt mixes i should say uh all everything is rooted out of these track stacks that i've created and into these audio channels that can create all of the stems and all of the um alt mixes uh so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you that uh now um uh how it records just in one pass everything all your stems and everything as we take a little listen to the track so yeah let's take a little listen to the track and then afterwards we'll take a look at the library and uh, dissect it a little bit Okay, um, so that is the track. Please excuse my dog barking in the background. Um, and like I say, it is a um, um, a trailerized rock or trailerized uh, cyberpunk uh, track, as how I'd describe that. Uh, quite frenetic. Quite um, well, I've tried to do it in in the Doom style, which is very frenetic and otherworldly and um, heavy and distorted. And um, if you haven't checked it out, I would definitely urge you to go check out um, Mick Gordon's um, OST for for the fir first Doom um, project that he did. And, and he does a seminar as well, um, I think GNC seminar, and that's recorded on YouTube. So go check that as well to see how he um, did the sound design originally for it, because it's fascinating stuff. It's stuff I can't recreate it, but people are trying. Um, there's, a, there's other videos on YouTube as well of people trying to recreate what he's done. He does it all with analog gear, but they're trying to recreate it and stuff like Ableton and with plugins and stuff. And it's, it, it is a fascinating uh, way of doing the sound design. Um, but I've, I've followed Joe Ford's um, tutorials uh, and used this library Breakout Pro uh, plus a whole bunch of processing uh, to try and recreate something similar and create a trailer track out of it. Um, so yeah, trailerized rock, trailerized cyberpunk, doom style, and uh, as you can see, 
I've just recorded all of my stems all in one go as I said at the beginning um, there they are all done that's that's how quick it is in the past um, I found when I've used um, um, other templates that I've made you basically have to solo each um, thing and then bounce project and you have to go through one by one doing that uh, for each of the um, each of the different uh, stems you want to create and it's a bit time consuming here and, and the same with your alt mix as well um, publishers want um, your full mix they want the no choir mix and no percussion no instrument they're the most common ones and some publishers will ask for other things as well but the way that i have rooted my template everything can just be recorded in one pass all your stems done all your alt mixes all done the only thing i mean i don't have choirs in here the only thing is the um uh, was it the no percussion uh, mix doesn't have the choir in it so if uh, if you want a real no percussion mix um and you have we're using choirs you would have to duplicate um your choir stem uh and then bounce just these two down together uh to create um a, a no percussion uh, no perk uh, mix with the choir included because uh, just the way the routing works i couldn't do it so that i could do it all in one pass if if the, the choir was part of that um, no perk mix uh, it's just the way the routing works in logic <clears throat> but other than that very very quick and it's the same with my template building as well uh, if you see my other videos you'll know that i use logic's browser up here and uh, not the guitar is not a good one to use because that's using a different library uh, but i've been saving every patch um, of all the libraries um, here so let's take a, a quick look at the library itself so as you can see if we come into my contact browser uh, the file structure inside the contact is exactly the same as the file structure um, here i've literally uh, just saved every single patch um, uh, the same as you'll find it inside um, inside contact I've saved them all inside the logic browser uh, and I find that just a much quicker way of template building and um, so that what I have done is I've created this blank template um, as you can see here like this is just a blank instrument um, uh, these are all the hidden tracks i've hidden all the ones i'm not using in this particular template and then i've got a whole bunch of spares i've actually used a couple of these spares for this doom bass and this doom lead which i haven't labeled maybe i should just label that now um doom lead um uh, and uh, so i've created a bunch of spares if i want to add extra stuff or if i want to layer stuff from other libraries on top of what's already here um and I've also, like like you saw, I've also created this stems folder so I can do all that stemming. So when I have this blank template, I literally just go in and I will um, uh, duplicate tracks with Control D and then just keep loading in um, the, the, the sounds from here. And I just find this a much quicker way of template building. Um, it takes me like 10 15 maybe 20 minutes to to build this template from scratch when in the past if i was just doing it from a blank screen it would take me hours you know good two or three hours to like do all the routing and get everything labeled and um everything loaded how i wanted it to now it's 10 15 20 minutes um so if you if you like the idea of this um then uh, this blank template that i've created for logic you can download for free from my store there'll be a link and if you want to use all of these um patches that i have saved um for all of the stuff inside um breakout pro uh obviously you need the copy of the library to start off with but if you have a copy and you want to use these patches then that's on my um on my store for ten dollars so yeah just head over there if you want this but yeah let's take a close look at the library and then uh how i have um used it to create this track so here is the file structure like i just mentioned of all the different things that come within a within the library and like i said it contains all of the uh, sounds you would most associate with trailer tracks and plus a few uh, added extras that are you know a bit unique to this library so you've got your big hits all different styles here some booms as well which i put in a separate um uh separate uh a track stack separate stem stack stem you know um uh what's the word print stem uh print print auxiliary channel god i can't talk today um and yeah, there's a whole bunch of different like um uh, hits there you can use plus some like tails that uh you could probably i think i think i'd probably use the tail samples uh more as wishes i would like bounce them down as audio and then reverse them to create wishes but you could add them as a kind of like a reverb on the end of um some really close um mic um hits 
then you've got drums um like i say um um joe ford is a is like a an edm producer or dubstep and glitch hop and um neural funk so he's got a whole bunch of like kind of like a dancey sounding kits and um uh instruments kick that's got about you know about 30 or 40 kicks in that one and uh, same with the snares and then a whole bunch of kits as well then we've got some gun handlings and some tiktoks these are good little glitchy sounds often used to add a bit of kind of pace into a track um without using percussion and some more kind of percussive sounds punches which are kind of like like um uh, trailer trailer drums that are really kind of tight and small um small in length tycos used all over trailers and a few loops these are more kind of like um kick and snare and hi-hat loops and they're spread over the whole keyboard range so that you can mix and match which loops go together it's quite interesting to play around with them uh, and you can just very easily create a kind of like um old dubstepy trap style beat or uh, drum bassy stuff as well if you speed up the tempo, mine's 100 tempo, so it's all kind of slow stuff. Uh, and then you've got your bass and your Brahms. Brahms, obviously, all over a whole different like range. Some of these ones, these hybrid and distortion basses, you can really hear the um, the, the drum bass influence, um, the kind of reesey sounding and gnarly and kind of moving all over the place. A lot of movement um, in in these kind of sounds and these kind of drum bass sounds and that's great for doing your own sound design as i'll show a bit later uh benders this type of brahm it's got like a pitch bend in it signature sounds they're they're more kind of unique sounding tend to be up in the higher registers rather than brahms that down low in the bass but they kind of perform the same kind of uh, function signals they're like pings whole different bunch there some short some long some uh individual and some classic as they've of uh, uh, um uh, labeled it but yeah they're kind of pingy sounds alarms you know like sirens again all over um trailer stuff and they've also created these kind of pulses using the alarms uh, they call them tenet pulses um i don't know if that's in relation to the uh to the to the film tenet but um yeah they're, they're, they're certainly quite cool as like little po extra pulses uh within the library just from these alarm sounds resonances is i i kind of use these like um pads and um and uh uh, drones um, they're more like one shot drones if, if that even makes any sense um, but they have that same kind of quality to them what I do is I tend to just um, sequence different one shots one after the other to create a big long drone or pad or something like that I think they're supposed to be used layered on, over the top of Brahms to create that extra tail in the Brahm um, but like I say I just I just kind of like sequence them together to create interesting movement in uh, in drones and pads um slow motion these more kind of glitchy effects plus some downers downers that you know that kind of like pitch bent down almost like an 808 sound with distortion again used in transitions or in the breaks between uh the um the acts used all the time reverse effects and uh risers again used all the time to in, in, leading into um big hits or leading into changes or edit points TikToks, um, these are kind of TikTok loops. We saw TikToks before in the drums. These are loops. Um, they, they, they're using clock sounds, but they're more like rhythm patterns. They're more like little high frequency rhythm patterns. And got an, again, a bit of a glitchy sound to them. Really useful for adding extra pace and tension in trailer tracks. Use them all the time. Pulses. Uh, we talked about this in the Jaeger video. Um, they're just used again to add pace and tension. Uh, used and some of these are synth, uh, and some of them are kind of uh, drum pulses, which is basically like a kick drum rhythm or something. Uh, and then we've got some loops. These are just using the um, the samples here, but in a, in a more of a kind of a looped way. They've all like pre-arranged, pre-sequenced. Again, you can get some interesting. Um, um, ideas from using these and uh, or quick and dirty way of starting a track as well um i do like these sign elements and the signal signature loops these are quite nice i've used those before uh, and then playables these are just kind of basically like um synth presets and uh well, i use the distortion bass and the classic leads uh, to do my own sound design again following jay ford's um uh, tutorials over on the over on the um uh, keep forest youtube channel and then at the end uh, we have this breakout pro i'm not going to click on it because it will load it up wherever i'm happen to be which is on these drums i don't want that what i'll do is i'll go down to my sound design stem which is where i've stuck it in the breakout pro now this is what um this is the, i mean this is a really interesting uh, thing that keep forest have done and they they started it um with their azac series of um 
sample libraries and they basically created a um a, a randomized engine within contact um so you have these eight slots and into these eight slots you can load any sample you could do it by hand just go in here and you can find whichever sound you want and just load it in uh and there it is um and then you can just do that all manually or you can use their randomized engine which is really cool up here and you can just um they've got a whole bunch of presets that you can just um these are this is this will basically create um, a randomized out of the hit and subtail um so we click on that exit hit kit and then the whole thing is now um let's have a little play in one of them no, not that one so that is um using their hit and subtail um preset for the randomizer or you can come up here i don't know uh, cinematic bender and then we'll hit kit again and then that's that's randomized or or you can come in here and if you hit um i think it's alt and click that that does everything click that and click it oh click that uh, and click it again now that's so yeah, I've hit Alt and I've clicked on here and that's, that's selected everything. And then I hit Alt again and click on that. That selects everything. Click it again. It deselects everything. So now you can come in and individually pick what you want uh, for each of these different things and create yourself a modern signature for there. And we're going to have a, uh, I don't know, Devastator Brahm there. And here we're going to have a signal. We're gonna, let's have a um, specific signal here. Let's have a little reverse effect. Over here, we'll have, I don't know, a resonator, low resonator, and then let's have another resonator as well. Atmosphere resonator. Here, phew, I don't know, um, let's have uh, another signal. Let's have a uh, classic signal. And then we'll finish it off with a hit, organic hit. And so I've just created my own randomizer. And what's going to happen is each of these categories has got a whole bunch of samples in it. And it's going to randomly pick one of those samples for each of these different units, depending on what I have picked. So like I, 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 just, I just kind of randomly picked a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, and so now we go over here and we hit kit and we hit yes. It's now created a whole bunch of random, um, uh, well, not random, it's, well, it has random um, samples to load into all of these slots based on my selection. And that's a whole bunch of, um, you know, unique sounds. Um, you won't find any of those sounds um, that I've just played in the actual library because it's mixing and matching a whole bunch of random sounds together based upon the selection I've made up here. And, and that's it's a great tool. You could create uh, an entire track um, just using the Pro plugin and creating your random sounds without ever using any of the presets in here. You could just create the whole thing just from this. And it would and it'd be a lot more unique because... Um, it'll be sounds that nobody's created before because it's all randomly put together. And then, of course, you can tweak it afterwards. If you don't particularly like that Brahm, you can go in and uh, change it for a different Brahm. Um, and then you've got this thing over here, which is kind of like a... Um, it kind of it, it mixes between the sounds. So you, And you can you can record that down here somewhere. Um, here, record. And you can move it around so that uh, at some points, as the sound's playing, it's you can hear this corner more, and then other points you can hear down here more. And it, it, you can create, like, um, movement within the sound by um, mixing, which, which... which And you can see the volume is changing over the side. Those are moving it around. And, and it has other controls as well. Um, each of these samples, you can... Um, control in here with some filters and pitch and um lfo pan um this is kind of like automating the volume if you wanted to or the pan if you wanted to you can make it go backwards and forwards uh, you can do that for each individual sound so this is a great great um tool to have uh, at your disposal for creating your own sounds and again like i say you can create an entire track just using this um uh, but the interface itself with the rest of the um the rest of the library let's take a quick look let's look at the risers um, so normally uh, for, for all the presets that they've created this is the pre this is the interface that comes up uh, here's where you see your sample um, you have control again you know, like a pan and the LFO volume and create you know like automation through the uh, sample as it plays this from hit if it's got like a whoosh hit this from hit will um, play it from the hit and just cut out the whoosh uh, can be quite useful if you don't want that um, 
that, that little pre-sound coming in beforehand. You've got ADSR over here. Um, uh, pretty standard. Uh, a filter down here. And you can like um, learn MIDI CC so you can... Um, put that to a, a knob on your keyboard or the mod wheel or um, a really extensive reverb section i don't tend to use these built-in reverbs um inside um, plugins but they've really kind of gone all out with this um so you can have a lot of control over how the reverb affects the sound if that's what you want to do um and then they've got a whole bunch of presets for for the uh, impulse responses i assume um like really short or up to, up to really long so yeah if you wanted to use the inbuilt reverb here uh, they, they've got a really extensive control here i don't tend to do that i tend to use my own reverbs inside my um inside my um, template uh, then you can add your own effects here as well a whole bunch here you can pick from i think these are like the built-in contact effects and there's like eight slots you can use i think you can load i think they do have presets that you can load as well um i think i can't find them um i tried the other day I'm not sure where they are maybe they're in the actual uh um oh god where is it Jesus. oh i want music music drive keep forest um so look list uh, where would it be where would it be uh devastated breakout pro uh, breakout pro uh, multis maybe nope snapshots nope well I, i'm not sure where they are but i'm, I'm not going to spend too much time looking but um, I, th I do think they do have some effect change you can load or you can just save your own once you've created some um yeah that was a real interesting a uh, couple of minutes of video there and then uh, as well as the main and the effects you also have this rhythm section which is a kind of like a, a built-in sequence that they've created and this you can definitely load up um patterns that they've created themselves um and this you can assign this to the step sequencer which basically means it will trigger the sample each time and this would be the different velocities or you could uh, assign it to say the filter and this would uh, oh you have to then uh, load up a different one uh, or the same one and now this is uh, why is that not loaded maybe you can't load it for the filter maybe you have to do the filter by hand maybe no oh. well okay so maybe that only maybe these presets up here they only work uh with um the step sequencer and if you want to do any filter or anything else you'd have to do that um by hand this affects the pitch obviously you can see how many semitones it's gonna do there uh and then there's a one for pan as well which is again left and right left and right so there you go uh, and and like i say you can just create some really interesting rhythms i've used this in my track um like the trailer drums i've used and if you wanted to create your own which is pretty easy um uh, i'm not sure how you go back to um how you go back to the the default but anyway these plus and minus buttons down here um will uh create uh different divisions within these eight beats and then you can increase the amount of beats where you can go up to 16 and you can increase the divisions all like you can create a whole bunch of divisions think like eight divisions within a single beat um and then you can change around all the velocities you can do triplets very easily and I, I've I've created this entire track um, just in triplets, really, uh, by playing around with this. So yeah, that is the interface. Um, a, a, a lot of very easy to use, um, and like I say, that, that 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 little sequencer engine can be a lot of fun. Um, so let's take a little look at how I've used this track um, to create. I mean, use this library to uh, create this track. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, let's hide those stems. We don't need those anymore. Hide them. Okay. Act one, the intro. Um, obviously, this is um, the build up. This is introducing the characters, setting the scene. And it's um, a bit kind of um, more low key than the rest of the track. So I've done a, a basic three act structure. That's the um, intro. 
that's the main section really is my act two uh, probably goes all the way up to here actually that's like a little ending to act two and then my act three is very small at the end uh, it's just like about 20 seconds long whilst all of these are like 40 seconds long so act one and act two are the main events in my um in this track and then act three is just a little kind of add-on at the end just to kind of um really uh emphasize the intensity at the end um so the whole uh of act one is basically just building 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 i've got um low pass filters um uh gradually um bringing in the, the main riff which is um this guitar so yeah the whole track is basically um kind of based around this guitar riff uh which is also um echoed in the doom bass now this doom bass has a uh So this Doom bass, um, this is the this is the thing that inspired me to do the whole track, and this is from um, the uh, um, this is from um, the, the, the videos that Joe Ford has done and how to create it. So it's basically um, his distort one of his distortion basses, uh, and what, it's got a great feature. So this is a really long sample, and it's got lots of movement going on, and you can set this randomized sample start feature so that um, each time you play it it starts at a different point within the uh, within the sample and this is great for just creating a bit of movement within um, the within the, the sample within the sound without having to do any work really and you can set here how much of the random you want to use I have, I've set it quite low so it's just doing a little bit of a randomization but you can obviously make it even more so and it's just starting all different different places so that's a great little feature and then you set these kind of bars here at which point it's going to um the randomized function is going to uh, um is going to be affected within so use that um and then i've also layered um a, a kick drum over the top from his kick presets and then I process them both together again, following his um, following his um, tutorials with a whole bunch of different effects. I've got some um, uh, limiting going on, just really flattening the sound out. Ubic G, which is kind of like a granular effect. Phases, which is like notch filters. Spiff, uh, which is a um, Oak Sounds um, transient. Um, it's like a it's like a multi-band transient uh, designer. Uh, just bringing out some of the highs and then uh, oh yeah I've got um, Ubic um, filter and that's what I'm using to kind of uh, bring in uh, the filter uh, sweep effect uh, you can hear that low pass filter just gradually opening them up And that's got, got the guitar laid over the top. And that is the backbone of the entire track. It's just this very simple riff going from E to F sharp and with a G at the end. And I think... Um, uh, with the 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 bass, I've got it coming up a bit higher just to kind of add that little extra um, tonal element. Oh, and even higher. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, um, but yeah, that very simple riff is just uh, the backbone for the entire track. It, it it stays the same all the way through. Nothing is really developing musically. It's all through the sound design. It's all through layers of the different sounds. So it starts off, it doesn't start off with the, that, even though that's the main part. It starts off, um, it may, the main element at the beginning is the, is the TikTok. So you've got that TikTok coming through. And that's just using a whole bunch of, of the different... Um, 
uh, sounds from from the kit rather than the actual TikTok loops at this part of the library. This this is their kit. I just created my own TikTok sound, and and the whole thing. I started doing it in straight four four, and then I started using a lot of um, a lot of triplets, and so it's it's almost like I've got a hundred BPM, but it's playing at a different tempo because, as you can see, there's only three passes of this four beat um, pattern uh, per four bars so it's, it's sort of in a weird triplet weird time signature i don't know what i did here i just worked with a lot of triplets and it just ended up being really weirdly spaced like if you look later on um some of these uh you know these booms should be right on the lines but i've had to stagger them at a weird kind of place just to make it in time with the the weird triplet patterns i've got going on with the whole track uh so it's, it's almost like i've done a four four track not at 100 bpm even though it is at 100 i i just kind of went with it um and it was all because i started using um triplets with the percussion up here and then started doing a weird half half um note triplet pattern for the for the for the guitar line but like i say i just went with it and it, it ended up being a lot of work trying to get everything in time in the right place because it just wasn't on the grid um but there you go live and learn um, so yeah, it starts off uh, with this TikTok coming in, nice little bit of tension, nice bit, little bit of rhythm, and then uh, I put them in drones. Like I said earlier, those resonances, they are the drones. And I've just sequenced different of these resonances together. So I've got the resonance vibrations and the low resonance, and then these atmospheric longs in here. You can see I've just used a whole bunch of different ones sequenced together. And it just creates like a, a a sort of a continual drone effect even though they're not really drones if that makes any sense probably doesn't and then obviously at the beginning of uh, tracks you always have booms we don't always have them but it's, it's, it's a staple but i've also added a little hit on top of that as well that's one of the organic hits i think or is it an organic hit or yeah one of the organic hits and an epic tie hit together And then I've also, like with the, um, like with the, uh, the, the droney sounds, I've also um, uh, created um, a kind of a sequence of pings. They're not really pings; they're all a bunch of different. But they, they, they have the same um, um, purpose within a track as pings. So they're just they're just interesting little one shot sounds. And I've got just got them, and then I think I've got them a bit more often in the second half of the intro. I've just, yeah, I've got that. And they're just creating little extra textures in the background um, as the whole thing is progressing. Um, so yeah. Um, the first half is just the first half of the first, the first half of the intro is just um, these kind of atmospheric sounds with um, some TikToks. I've also using that Breakout Pro. I've also created my own little Brahm thing here. Um, I didn't really use it a lot in the um, in the track. Just a, a weird little um, sound. I think I've, I've automated. Um, oh, where is it? Uh, it's up here somewhere. I think I've automated. Yeah, I've automated some um, f uh, some filter freak cut off um, just so it's coming in and out. It's just an another little nice texture um, using uh, Breakout Pro. Uh, and so that yeah, the, the beginning is just these atmospheric sounds for the first half, setting the scene, typical standard intro sort of stuff. And we've got a little bit of percussion coming in. Now I've used um, I've used that rhythm um, pattern, and I've used a lot of triplets. Um, so the whole this is where I started the whole triplet thing with uh, this percussion, and then I'm using the rubber drums, which are kind of like a trailer drums. Uh, So yeah, this is a triplet pattern, and then afterwards I wrote the guitar line to follow this pattern, which is where the whole triplet thing came from for the whole track.
And then you can also hear I've got um, in my signature sounds. That's why I've put the alarms and they are coming in as well. It's creating a lot of tension. I think they are being automated with some cutoff as well. Uh, yep, got another runctifier on there, which is the um, Ubic um, filter. Just gradually opening up. got a riser thing coming in um just got a, 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 just a riser from the um from the library nice sounding tonal riser and then i've got these bunch of risers as well what i've done is i learned this from um um from richard uh prin uh the artist formerly known as schreiber um and what he does is he bounces down a long um a riser and then he cuts it up into little chunks and layers them on top of each other and then puts fades in so you create a short riser out of a long riser by just layering up all the different parts of the riser uh, together and I, I quite like that uh, and I use that all the way through the track uh, at leading into um, edit points leading into changes like every eight bars or whatever um, and I've used that in the little, um, uh, the little segue between uh, Acts One and Act Two, along with uh, some hits. And I've also used where is it? Um, oh, there's a little transition sound down here because there's a whole. I put a separate bunch of transition reverse effects down here. Uh, these are quite nice little otherworldly effects. They're just um, presets. It does sound very otherworldly, like a bit kind of like hellish, which goes with the Doom style. And a little, this is a bass signature sound. So this is like one of those kind of Reesey sounds I was talking about. You can hear the um, uh, the um, influences from Neofunk. Again, sounds quite hellish. Um, and altogether, it's a quite a nice little transition in between uh, Acts 1 and Acts 2. Uh, so yeah that leads us into act two act two um the filter on the doom bass as all the way up and so it's in all its glory and with the guitars i have added um the high gain i've, I've not done it properly let's uh that should be high gain uh, which is a different tone um of guitar <laughs> And I think the great thing about these, um, I'm just going to talk about cable eight for a little bit here. The great thing you can choose um, how you want the different articulations. So it's got all these different articulations. Um, so you have like palm mute and I think finger mute or something. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not a guitarist. And sustain and then harmonics at the top. And this is all based on this one key switch with velocity. So the higher velocity changes which articulation. And then you could also do it by key switching. And so you could just play sustains if you want to. Um, but so I had a little bit of fun playing. I think this is just like playing harmonics or my. Oh no, this is really low velocity. So this is just palm um, mutes with a tiny bit of harmonics at the end, I think, or sustain at the end. And that's just layering over the top of the guitar, uh, which obviously um, goes well with the Doom bass. And then I've brought in some drums, doing a kind of like a, it's either dubstep or rock, whichever way you want to think of it. I would say rock. Uh, and I've added some extra symbols as well because um, I've created another symbol. So in the kits, they have um, they have uh, symbols already in there, a whole bunch of different uh, things, and a whole bunch of different kits you can pick from as well. Um, I've just gone with the what modern rock kit. So yeah, this is a rock beat, <laughs> and then I've layered some extra symbols um, over the top just to because they weren't they weren't poking through the mix enough for me. So I just added those little extra. Symbols. And this drum kit I've slammed with um, a bit of reverb and really slammed it with some um, pumping um, limiting just to flatten the whole thing out and then 
added a little bit of highs as well. I think that's just to get those cymbals poking through a bit more. And then to kind of accentuate the beginning of the uh, each of couple of bars, I've used one of the devastated Brahms. It's got this kind of um, drum and bassy feel to it. This Brahm, uh, and that was just one of the samples within uh, devastated Brahms. But I, I kind of like that kind of really crunchy sound, and it really um, helps uh, accentuate, like I say, the beginning of uh, where is it? Doing bass, the beginning of the bar. Uh, and then obviously again to accentuate the beginnings of the bars i'll keep the hits in except i've laid a few more on top um so before it was just a couple of hits one organic one um epic tight and now it's a bit more going on so it's a bit bigger and you can really hear it in the mix I think I've high passed um, a lot of these sounds, and uh, so the booms are the ones where the uh, where the sub is in the hits. You take away the booms, they're not quite so subby. They're quite subby. Maybe I haven't high passed all of it. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, maybe get a bit further up. Um, but anyway, I, I like the sound of it, no matter what. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 and in, uh, if you see my other videos, all of this stuff is mixed. I haven't just used it straight out. And I don't think you should just use it straight out of the box. You should do a bit of mixing uh, and just get things fitting together better. I mean, obviously, a lot of mixing is in the orchestration uh, and arranging it so that things don't overlap with each other. But it's still good to just like some of this stuff, even if they're like high sounds, like like a guitar that's playing in the mid-range, it'll still have a load of low end in there anyway. And it's just good to just filter that out just so you're not clogging up the mix and making stuff muddy. And give yourself a bit of headroom um, for when you're trying to get it loud at the end of the mix. I mean, this this isn't mixed how I would mix it for a um, for a publisher. Simply because um, if we uh, go to uh, let's go into the pit bus, but um, if we go to uh, my my master out, uh, I'm slamming it with them. Um, oh, I'm not. Oh, that's it. Everything's running very hot into the stereo out, and I've just got that to stop it from um, creating artifacts and stuff. But everything is. Is, is if I took that off, you'll see it's just running too hot. Yeah, look, up to eight. Uh, I'm just being lazy here. Um, like I say, if this is going to a publisher, I would have to go back, and I'd, what I'd probably do is I would go click on all of the um, all of the different um, all of the different buses. And then I would just drag everything down all in one go, just to, um, uh, or if I was being properly doing a proper mix, I would go through and find out what is creating the transients that are really pushing it high. And then I'd stick a compressor on. It would most likely be percussion and it would most likely be hits, uh, possibly Brahms. And I'd stick a little compressor on there just to tame the transients um, and give yourself a bit more headroom for the final mix. Uh, but like I say, I haven't done that. This has been quite lazy. I've just slapped a limiter on the master and uh, just let the whole thing run very hot. I mean, if you're lucky enough, you might have someone do the mixing for you. If you have a publisher that believes in you, or if they just have a, an on um, an on in in house mixer that they use all the time, then you might luckily just get to send them the. Uh, the uh the stems and they'll mix it for the master or even if you're even luckier or even more um uh, believed in uh you'll get uh um uh, you'll be able to send off multi-tracks and they'll do the entire mix for you i know there's some people that do get that done for them not me though um so where was i act two so we've uh we had these brahms we've got the tiktok still going along uh we've got the kits and the guitars um some layers and now another one of these sound design things he's done another video joe ford of um like creating like a lead sound or an arp sound again doom style and i have followed that and done my own little version of it 
And instead of instead of creating my own kind of um, pattern, I've just used uh, I've just used Logic's uh, inbuilt um, arpeggiator. And did I even create a pattern? I don't know if I created this or if I just loaded one. Oh, I loaded one. Complex groove chord. And I've set it to triplets again because this whole thing is in triplets. And again, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, effects going on. I've got a modulator. What's that affecting? A modulator. I think that's affecting. I think I've got that set to filter, I think. I'm not sure. Something like that. Um, just again, trying to create a bit of extra movement. But we've got all this extra stuff here. Again, uh, if you have, take a look. I've created my own kind of filter movement going on there from from the runk to fire the the the, the, the ubic filter again. Got rift doing some uh, modulating um, uh, the distortion from left and right channels with the inbuilt LFO. Um, that's quite a nice little um, uh, distortion that is. And then the granular effect again. And I've got some comb filtering going on. Uh, I've got some trash going on. What am I using there? Not sure what I'm using now. Oh, oh yes, I've got it. I've got a multi-band. Got different things going on. Crunchy grunge and then acid, um, and then I've got some um, ping pong delay going on, and then finishing the whole thing off with some OTT. Just bringing out the high end. Um, <laughs> Oh, and then I just created like a little, um, this is just a single note playing and then I've got pitch bend uh, gradually going up on it. Uh, just to create. Uh, so yeah, that along, I brought the alarms back in as well. And I think, are they still, no, nope, they're not, they're not being filtered in. They're just being layered over the top of everything. Uh, and so um, this this kind of the drums and the guitars and the bass are kind of creating the kind of doom um trailerized rock style to it <coughs> excuse me uh, and um, these little arps down here and this rising um, arp as well is creating like a, the, the cyberpunk feel almost um, almost a bit like prodigy really that, that kind of arpeggiated pattern and then we've got another riser coming in as well big long tonal riser I think I might have even um, uh, time stretched that one I think I have look there's a little time stretch button there so uh, yeah that was uh stretched out a little bit just to make it fill um uh the time i wanted it like the eight bars i think it is or four bars uh and that's quite a nice little riser i think and again i've high passed um out a bunch of the low end create a bit of headroom and then uh, like i told you earlier these this little um riser created out of a long riser um again uh, every few few bars and that brings us to the end of the uh of that of the second act oh and i do use some of some some of these pulses as well these are preset pulses mid pulses i've used i think uh just a little texture can't even really hear it in the mix you do hear however um this tenet alarm that i've used in the mix So I've got all these different elements staggered as I'm coming in in the second act. Starts off with just the bass and the beat. And then this arpeggio comes in. And then, as you can see, then that tenet alarm comes in. And then finally... Uh, the alarm from the intro and that rising arpeggio coming right there. So 
So I've got all these different elements um, staggering as they come in in the second act. So every four bars, basically, something new comes in and really kind of um, creates interest in the listener. And what I've done to try and stop them from clashing with each other too much, I've, I've been um, um, panning them in different places. So the alarms are panned slightly to the left. Uh, and then we've got the, the classic lead, I think it's panned slightly. I haven't panned that. I think that's got a bit of panning going on anyway. Oh, I have panned, I've panned the um, the rising um, uh, the rising arpeggio uh, slightly to the left as well. I think this one isn't panned because it's got some uh, panning going on with the ping pong delay. Um, and then the alarms, I think, are panned slightly to to the right. I think maybe, yep, slightly to the right. And I think some of the guitars I've panned left and right as well because um, that's just a classic way of mixing guitars. Uh, yep, let's slightly pan that to the left and that's slightly pan to the right. So that's just uh, panning them in different directions. Not very much. Look, I'm plus 14 and minus 12, whatever. Uh, they're not doing much, but it's just kind of spreading them out a little bit uh, so they don't clutter up the mix. And you, you, I, I didn't do that to start off with. And then I thought afterwards, oh, maybe I should do that. And I, the moment I did it, it just, the whole thing sounded much more clearer. Uh, yeah, and then it all leads up into this kind of, it's kind of a little refrain. It's like the end of section two kind of drops down a little bit and it just kind of, I've repeated, I've shortened the pattern down. It's kind of like either finishing off um, uh, the first, second act or it's uh, a gap in between the acts that isn't a gap. It's still got music. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I just quite like the sound of it. And that all that the whole thing is literally just copying and pasting and shortening um, the bits, chopping them up. As you can see, the the brahms have been chopped, and I've added some gun handling in here. These are kind of like uh, glitchy sounds, a bit like TikToks. So it's like guns cocking, but it, I, I just love that little kind of crunchy, glitchy sound. Um, and then I've also added a bit of percussion as well. Uh, I think this is just this is just like a, a drum roll. Gradually increasing in velocity, I think. Yeah, look, gradually increasing up in velocity. Uh, and it just adds a bit of extra tension, a bit of extra like rise to, to this little um, segment in between the, the, the Act 2 and Act 3. And I've added a little downer there in the, this little... Room. I think I think I pitched that down as well. So yeah, it's right down as far as the because you, you can choose which pitch you want and it, all of the sounds to play down here. And I've put it right down there. And I've also added it over the top uh, a boom and uh, that kind of weird otherworldly uh, transition effect that I liked from earlier. And then that leads into my little act three, which is basically just the most frenetic part of act two, uh, repeated over and over again. I've changed the drums slightly, so the, these were a bit of a weird kind of pattern that I created in the drums. And then I've added like a kick drum uh, roll as well, sort of thing. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's purely there to create tension and to create um, impact because the the beat itself is doesn't sound great to be honest. But, oop. Uh, because um, I've got all these um, uh, arpeggio patterns playing, uh, and I've got. Um, uh, the doom bass is I've, I've kind of shortened it down a bit like with the uh with this little refrain bit 
Um, it's all sounding very, very frenetic. Uh, got the brought the signals back in the ping sounds, um, and I think is the tenet um, alarm in there as well. No, no, I didn't, didn't bother with the tenet. Oh, maybe I did. Oh no, just the ordinary alarms, uh, the pulses. I didn't bother with the tenet alarm in this one, um, but it does sound very frenetic. And I wanted to kind of increase that idea of freneticness by just making the beat a bit more frenetic as well. Uh, and then I've got a big riser coming in, two two new risers layered on top of each other, um, just to really kind of increase that intensity for this last little section. Oh, and I should probably add, um, at the end of Act 2, I also, this kind of, this little crunch guitar bit here, kind of, uh, let's mute this bit, uh, control, mute. Uh, this kind of just um, accentuates the, the, the arpeggio pattern with the guitar. And that, like I say, that kind of goes with this um, uh, with this classic lead sound down here. They just kind of complement each other. And then I've got that repeating in Act 3 um, a, a, a lot, uh, a lot more frequently. Uh, let's get out here. Um, let's get guitars. So like I say, very frenetic. Um, um, it's not really um, uh, changing a lot or developing or even rising. Um, the whole kind of rising in this is coming from the drums increasing in intensity and also uh, from the uh, risers themselves. They're, they're, they're creating the increase in intensity in this very last section. <laughs> Oh, and I suppose also the Doom lead, um, that, that rising uh, um, arpeggio that I used in Act 2, that's also creating that kind of uh, rising effect as well. And then it just drops down into just the TikTok. And then a final boom. And that is it. That is the track. Um, so yeah, great library. Um, love the sounds in it. Love the tutorials of creating your own sounds. It's a great thing uh, to use as a starting off point. Um, and like I said before, uh, I really do love uh, this Breakout Pro bit, um, randomized engine. Uh, I used it all the time with Azerx and I use it a lot in this as well, although in this particular track I didn't because uh, I wanted to show off some of the actual presets from it. Um, but yeah, um, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, click like, uh, click subscribe. Uh, if you want these presets, go to my store. If you want the, just the blank template, that's free. Uh, temp the, the, um, the presets are $10 if you want them for your Logic um, browser. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.